Welcome to Back to Basics. In this episode, we'll discuss methods you can employ to recover data due to an accidental data deletion or possible data corruption in Amazon DynamoDB and Amazon Aurora, and patterns you can use to maintain consistency in your microservices. Let's say you have an online jewelry store and in the case of an unforeseen event, you can tolerate a recovery point objective of five minutes and a recovery time objective of an hour. You have regular sales events, which significantly fluctuate traffic to your website, and therefore you've implemented a serverless microservices architecture. In traditional applications, you would typically have one large database to service all business functions. In a microservice architecture, each business function has its own independent data store. A key design consideration is you will need to maintain asset compliance across all microservices so transactions can be completed and recovered in the event of corruption or a failure. With that, let's start with our first microservice. When a customer makes an online purchase, one of the services that your website interacts with is the orders microservice. You've exposed your orders microservice using Amazon API Gateway and AWS Lambda, which performs additional business logic like ensuring the item is still available and then saves the order in an orders table within DynamoDB. You also publish events for successful or unsuccessful transactions. A NoSQL database like DynamoDB is an excellent choice for this microservice as it provides low latency access to your online orders. Additionally, DynamoDB transactions provide acid across one or more tables. What if your jewelry orders in the orders table is accidentally deleted or corrupted? DynamoDB has a point-in-time recovery feature, which, once enabled, provides continuous backups of your DynamoDB data for up to 35 days with per-second granularity. Restoration using this method will occur in a new table. You simply point your microservice to this new table or copy the deleted data from the new table to your original table. Preventing this from happening in the first place is important. A common anti-pattern is leaving your DynamoDB table access wide open. Also, the order service may not even need delete permissions. To achieve this, apply least privilege principles by explicitly allowing only the needed permissions. Let's now take a look at the payments microservice leveraging Amazon Aurora. Aurora is a fully managed relational database engine that's compatible with MySQL and PostgreSQL and adheres to asset properties. If data is accidentally deleted or corrupted, your customers will be unable to complete their orders or your website may be left in a dysfunctional state. Aurora backs up your cluster volume automatically and retains restored data for the length of the backup retention period up to 35 days. You can quickly restore to any point within this period, typically within five minutes of the current time, which creates a new cluster. You can then copy your desired information back to your original cluster. If using a supported version of Aurora MySQL, once enabled, Aurora has a backtrack feature that essentially rewinds your database cluster to the time you specify up to 72 hours. If your applications cannot be stopped or paused briefly, backtracking should not be used as it causes a brief database disruption. Completing orders is typically made up of multiple microservices. If there is a deletion or a data corruption along this chain, not only will each microservice data store need to be in a consistent state, but you'll need a mechanism to ensure that retries are not applied twice to the same transaction. For example, you don't want the payment microservice to charge the customer twice. One pattern you can use here is the concept of item potency, which implies that given the same input arguments, 
a function invocation will only change state on the first invocation. One way to implement this is to create a new unique ID, an item potency token. If the microservice encounters an identifier it has previously executed, it returns early and doesn't apply any state changes. To implement item potency in your Lambda functions, you can use Power Tools for Lambda, which provides a module to handle item potency. In this episode, we discussed different ways to recover from accidental data deletion or corruption in DynamoDB and Aurora to keep your business running smoothly. Check out the links in the description below for more details. Thanks for watching Back to Basics. See you next time.